minutes to take a deep dive into Bluebird and learn a little bit more about promises. So I'd like to start by discussing why we would ever use a promise. Why are promises better than callbacks? So there are a few things that promises let you do that you can't do with a callback. So with a promise, you can use the results of your function later on. You can catch the error from multiple functions with one catch method. And they can make your code look a lot nicer and avoid looking like callback hell. So here's a small example of what a promise is. And as you can see, we have our promise constructor function right here. And the promise that you're creating is an object that contains this function that will ultimately result in a resolve or reject, or reject or resolve. So when we run this function or consume this promise, we could dot then off of it, and we could handle our resolve or our positive return first, and then worry about our errors later, as opposed to in a callback where you have to worry about your errors right away. Worry about your errors right away. So one of the advantages of using promises over using callbacks is that if you use multiple promises, you could dot then, dot then, dot then, dot then, and then do a, a catch at the end, which will catch any errors that happen in any of those promises. And that is a small advantage. So why would you use Bluebird? So Bluebird can help you do some of the things that you'd want to do with promises natively, but aren't implemented yet. Uh, for example, just creating a promise, as we saw here, can be a lot easier if you use Bluebird's native Promisify. So Promisify is a function in Bluebird that takes in any callback function, specifically node-style callback functions. They have to have an error as the first parameter in the callback function. And you can just Promisify them. So if I have a read file async, or fs.read file async, as we saw before, I could do promise.promisify that function, and Bluebird will automatically turn that into the same promise we saw before. So you never actually have to worry about calling that new promise constructor and writing out all that code. Bluebird will do it for you with Promisify. Now, in many cases, you might have a callback function with more than one argument. So if you have more than one argument, you have to tell Bluebird that that's the case, and it will take care of that for you and return all of those results in an array of results. So we could also, even more conveniently, and this is probably one you've all seen before, Promisify all. So if you have any library that you're importing and it has callback functions in it, like fs, for example, I can actually Promisify all on fs, and it will turn every method inside of that, inside of fs, that is a callback function, into, well, it won't turn them into a promise, but it will create another method that is a promise. So for example, here, we still have read file on fs, but now we also have fs.read file async, which we can use that we've used in the previous examples, like you saw earlier, in the previous examples. Uh, oftentimes, you have some libraries that already have promises, and you want to also add promises to them. So in our example, we've seen a lot of people use mongoose.model, and for that specific model, they want to promisify it, so that you would promisify all, but Bluebird actually lets you do that on all of Mongoose. So you can Promisify and just require Mongoose, and everything inside of Mongoose will have a promise, a Bluebird promise, instead of the initial Mongoose promise that you would have had before. So you can use all of your Bluebird methods that you would want to use. So we have a lot of promises, and we want to use them. So there are many ways you would use promises besides for dot, the dot then. In this case, we will have a dot all. Dot all is particularly useful when you have multiple things that must resolve before you can continue. For, so one instance of that is if you wanted to create a review of some kind of product, but you needed a user and a product that you wanted to use the review for, that you wanted to assign the review to. So in this particular case, we're finding one user in an array. Notice these have to be an array when you use dot all, and a product. And they both go into the array, and when they come back, we can use the array of results, which in this case would look like this. So as you can see here, we have to do results 0 and results 1 and designate the index in the array. So that might not always be convenient. So Bluebird gives you a dot spread method. And what dot spread allows you to do is instead of getting an array as a result, you can actually assign, instead of doing this or this, you can actually assign those parameters in the function that you're putting into your dot spread. Right, so now I could say users equals users and products equals products. It'll look cleaner and it's more convenient to use 
anytime you're using those promises. Another useful method, or the, I think the most useful method that Bluebird allows you to use is .map. So map will cut out a lot of the work you have when you are making promises out of an array. So in this particular example, we have a card of items that are, we're going to turn into promises, like so. And then after that, we want to dot all of them because we need them all to resolve. And we want to return the names of all of those products. Right, so I take in the array and then I join in and say these are the products you are buying. So with dot map, you could just put this array that we were mapping, put it right into the map. And then comma, the map function you want to do. And then this then will happen after a dot all already resolves. So it, it joins that mapping and that all for you. Another thing you can do with promise.map that might be pretty convenient when you're dealing with APIs or databases that have restricted capacity is add a concurrency parameter. So the concurrency parameter actually controls how many promises will be sent out at a time. So if you have an array of 1,000 items and you have a database or API that only lets you make 100 requests at a time, you can set concurrency to 100 and Bluebird will control the promises for you to make sure you only have 100 promises out at a time waiting to be resolved, or 100 functions, requests out at a time waiting to be received. So in this situation, if I had multiple items, let's say I had 10 items and I set concurrency to two, my Bluebird will send out the first two requests, and then when either of them come back, it's going to send out the next request. And then when either of those come back, it'll send out the next request. So it maintains it maintains that limit, but it also doesn't force them to happen sequentially, which in some cases might be required. So in those cases, we have a few more methods that happen non-concurrently or sequentially, and they are map series, promise.each, and promise.reduce. And all of these are used in situations where you want your promises to be accomplished in sequence. So some specific examples of those are for promise.each, I actually had a really hard time finding a use case for promise.each. I think the only time you would really use it is if you not only need it to, something to happen in series, but also you want to return the original array. So in this case, for example, thanks Mike for the example, we have a phone plan and a smartphone and a phone case. So when you buy a phone plan, right, you might want a smartphone, but you wouldn't want to get the smartphone if you, the phone plan was never purchased. Right, so in those cases, you need it to happen sequentially. So you need each purchase to happen in order. First, the phone plan needs to be purchased. Then the smartphone needs to be purchased. And then the phone case needs to be purchased. So you got that then through all of those. Or instead, you could do an each here. So I take my items, and I stick them into the each. And then I can make the promise that I want to resolve. And for each one of these, I'm going to purchase them as they go in. So first, I'm going to do the phone plan. And when it purchases, only then will my smartphone promise be sent out. And only once that resolves, my phone case get sent out. So and then if I purchase all of them, I can send a resolution with the initial items. Right, so this is the initial array, not the returns from my dot each function. So another interesting use case for this sequential instance is dot reduce. And the main reason you'd want to use a dot reduce is if you have many promises in a row and you want to limit the ones that are sent out. Like if you have an array and it has, say, 10 promises, if you don't really necessarily need all 10 of those promises to resolve. You might want to cut off sending requests out after a certain number of promises have already resolved. So in this case, for instance, we have a, a maximum budget and a wish list. And the wish list is ranked. So I only want to get the second item if I got the first item, and I don't want to get the third item if I couldn't get the second item. So in this case, I have an accumulator, which will accumulate or hold on to the total price. This is done the same way as a reduce. So I have my initial values here and my reduce function in here. And then as soon as the accumulated total exceeds the maximum budget, I'm going to return. So many of my requests will never go out, and I don't have to overload my server with requests that I'm never going to use. So in summary, there are many different methods that you can use with Bluebird. I have a quick summary chart here, if you would like to have it for reference. 
But basically, the most important ones are the ones that I use the most I put on top, and then the less used ones I put on bottom. As you can see, these sequential ones I don't really find that much use for. But I definitely think that Promiseify and Promiseify All I use probably in every document. And Promise that all and Promise that map are used all the time. And you should get very comfortable using them. Here are some additional resources. Thank you so much for your time.